look to the seas It's a new home for you With the domes to start up new Yeah, then enters Momo She came alone Your skin was fire And all the things you do And they called her Momo Hi, I'm Michael Leverts and this is Fit To Be Red. The Membranes by Taiwanese author Chi Ta Wei was originally published in 1995 and eventually translated into English last year, 2021. The Membranes is a mesmerizing and original science fiction novella exploring themes of post-environmental devastation, advances in artificial intelligence and bio and cyborg technologies, exploration of humanity, free will, queerness, and sexuality. The Membranes is mesmerizing, jarring, beautiful, and thought-provoking. I recommend The Membranes for, of course, fans of translated science fiction and those who have read and enjoyed other works where artificial intelligence is implemented as a device through which to examine humanity. I, Robot, The Culture, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, House of Suns, and 2001 A Space Odyssey all come to mind. I can't help comparing this to the most obvious or recent read, Kazuo Ishiguro's Clara and the Sun. This was a novel that I did not feel lived up to the great classics, exploring similar themes. The Membranes, for me, was a real success, and it brought new ideas to the table. This novel was brought to my attention and recommended to me by Mianacorn from the phenomenal channel The Bookish Land. I'll link Mianacorn's details in the description section of this video. As with each review on this channel, the episode will begin with a spoiler-free review to introduce you to the novel. Following the summary, I'll announce a 5 likes and 5 dislikes segment that will include spoilers for those who've read the novel and want to hear me unpack some more thoughts. Engage with me in the comment section and let me know if you've read this novel or other translated science fiction greats that you'd recommend to those of us who love to discover things from other places. The Membranes is set on a dying earth. Climate change has devastated the land with the only refuge subaquatic cities on the floor of the ocean. The scientific community warned the greater public of air pollution and steps needed to curb environmental and atmospheric damage. Did we listen? No, of course not. And then it was too late. Skin cancer deaths begin to rise dramatically. Also interesting in this future, there is an AIDS vaccine. And due to darker pigmented skin adding more protection than those with lighter skin tones, a sort of black superiority is alluded to. This led to Caucasian instigated race riots and restricting memberships to Christianity and Hinduism exclusively to people of color. Everyone now lives in domes under the seas. It's a dystopian world, and while there's almost no good reason for most to return to the surface, there remains some activity. About 1% of the population remained on the surface. These folks were necessary personnel for running reactors, and because this is dystopian, prisons and convicts were left up there to burn thus eliminating the need to add correctional facilities to the list of things to replicate underwater. Everyone else took to the seafloor and brought all industry, agriculture, and infrastructure with them. The only expansion on the surface were vast solar array fields and a few new industries, most notably cyborg factories. Because cyborgs were durable and could withstand the surface environment, they could handle basic surface duties like running the prisons and managing most of the sea to surface tourist industry. Nations have not given up their thirst for war and expansion, so most military conflict is assigned to the surface. Conveniently, the world's military have cyborgs to melee on land, sparing human lives and keeping all those messy battles away from the undersea cities. A New World Accord held that land holdings on the surface would be represented proportionally under the ocean. The main character of the story is Momo, a dermal care technician or esthetician living in T-City at the bottom of the ocean. Momo lives a pretty secluded life and her interactions are mostly limited to the clients that she sees for dermal treatments. Momo is mostly estranged from her mother, who's been absent for most of the events of her life. The story features some flashbacks including long stays in medical institutions, 
leaving the reader to interpret potential reason behind Momo's confusion about her past, her aversion to intimacy and the ability to receive the affection of others, and her complicated and not quite clear relationship with her mother. In some ways, this is just a story about a relationship between a mother and her daughter. Momo's mother was faced with obstacles of treatment, care, and protection of her sick child, and Momo lives with only vague ideas of who her mother is and is unaware of why her mother was absent for most of her life. The Membranes is a thought-provoking novel that dives deep into examining existence and identity. The science fiction is rich in this novel, especially enlisting new technologies for surviving environmental collapse, and even more significantly, employing artificial intelligence as a means of examining humanity. The environment is now ripe for my five likes and five dislikes, including spoilers, for Chita Wei's The Membranes. Like number one, the skin cancer crisis disproportionately affects white people, and it's perceived as a religious retribution of sorts. This doesn't figure into the rest of the story, but it's a fun creative detail to the changing world order. Dislike number one, the story sets up an extremely interesting potential for gender examination and then only follows through with it halfway. The superficial premise is there. Momo's graphic moment with Andy in the hospital initiates the presentation, but the rest of the book only hints at how gender affects or doesn't affect Momo's life and consciousness. Dislike number two, there was more to Momo's relationship with her mother that was left uncovered. I don't knock the book as it is a novella, Rather than a dislike, I see this as more of a missed opportunity. We sort of knew we'd discover something about why Momo's mother was so absent from her life. She was never around. We didn't hear a lot about her. All of the reveals work for a novella, and Chi Ta Wei does so much, so succinctly, in only a few pages, but there was so much more to unpack with her mother if we had gotten a full novel. Dislike number three, after the big reveal about Momo being just an organic brain in an android body, much of the remainder of the book is full-on info dump. I'm not quite sure how you avoid that, but nonetheless, it is a bit info dumpy for me. Like number two, I like that Momo is an entrepreneur. Of course, this all ends up being in her head, but I didn't realize the simple fact of her navigating this domed aquatic world and opening a business and that being very significant to the story would be something that really stood out for me. Like number three, it cleansed my palate from my last go round with a new release that examined humanity and consciousness and love. I mentioned Clara in the Sun already, so I won't beat a dead horse here, but this was a nice sigh of relief. Dislike number four, the added section of the book that appears to be labeling the work as Taipei Punk, it just feels a little bit gimmicky. It's a riff on cyberpunk, I get it, but for me, the punk moniker doesn't fit. The part that actually applies is cyber, but cyber Taipei just doesn't have the same ring to it. By all means though, if it's Taipei punk to somebody, far be it from me to correct it. It's just not a label that works for me in this case. Like number four, the reveal that Momo is just the brain and the consciousness in a box at the end. It's not a new thing to think about, but what we just went through with her, it's not hard to get lost for a while comparing the differences between having your full organic body, an artificial body and an organic brain, or no body at all and just existing as a brain in a box. The novel intends you to think about these things and it delivers. Like number five, the queerness is unique. When I hear speculative queer fiction, I'm expecting that there's gonna be clear gay, lesbian, or trans relationships and characters and conflict, obvious things like that. This flips the script. This novel and these characters are truly queer, and they represent queerness in a special and a very unique way. Dislike number five, I waffled on if I wanted to go there on calling out the premise. I read sci-fi constantly, and of course there's always implausible premises to be found. I'm including it here with my dislikes because my mind wandered to thinking about it all through the read, even when I was supposed to be thinking about other things. Visually, I love it. Domes membranes under the sea, cyborgs battling it out on the desolate surface, very practical. It all shows very cool. It just sticks out so hard for me as a reasonable solution in this not that far future Earth. Thank you for watching. I'm Michael Everts and this is Fit to be Read.